Welcome to our class on washing, storing, and preparing fresh farm food. We hope that this class will help prepare you to start bringing home a farm share each week and shifting your habits towards starting with local seasonal vegetables to plan your meals and snacks. Hello, and thank you for joining us once again. The one thing that doesn't change year after year very much is what it's like to bring home fresh farm food. We all need to wash it, store it, and then prepare it for eating. And it's, it's something that we have been doing for hundreds of years. And so just like last year, um, participants are going to join that time-honored tradition of bringing home fresh food that's been grown miles from their door and their kitchen table. Um, this year, because we are delivering our food, it's going to be a little different. Some of your food will be very thoroughly washed already, but I suggest you still give it a rinse or a soak before preparing it to eat. And then also some of it will be packaged up, which is helpful. It gets you started on getting everything into the fridge, or as you'll see in the clips, some things can be kept on your counter or in a dark cabinet, like onions and garlic. So we're gonna give you just really the tip of the iceberg today on at least reminding you that there are many different ways to bring your food into your kitchen and to eat it up in seven days time before your next food arrives. And so I'm gonna play you these clips. It's gonna go through the, the process and a little bit about cooking. And forgive me because some of these cooking clips are about what our classes that we hosted last year on site at CCU Tompkins. And of course this year it's gonna be a little different. We're going to have virtual cooking classes most likely for the duration of the program. And so just know that even though I'm describing three distinct cooking classes in this video, um, it's really a set of skills for um, cooking different types of vegetables, recognizing is this a leaf? Is this a root? Is this a fruit of a plant? And how do I cook it and prepare it? Because really you can swap them out interchangeably um, once you understand sort of what you're holding in your hand. Even if you don't know the name of it, you can find a way to cook it. Let's go over what you'll do each week when you bring your share home and unpack it. First, you'll get things in the fridge to keep them cold. And then maybe, if you have time, wash and chop some for later. Make sure you plan your week to eat the delicate things first, and then enjoy them throughout the week as you snack and prepare meals. Let's think about what you're gonna be getting. You're gonna be getting greens every week from now until Thanksgiving. You will have some greens that you are going to eat raw, like salad greens, and you're gonna have some greens you could eat raw or cooked and then some like collards that you're really gonna wanna cook. And I'm just showing you here, I'm gonna take all the greens out. So one of the things you'll notice, because I didn't just come straight from the farm, I came from my kitchen, is that I've sort of packaged these greens up a little bit. And this is because, first of all, there's too many to fit in my fridge, right? So I had to store some of these greens I'm gonna just unpack everything and then I'll go through it. I had to store some of these greens on my counter. And that may seem ca counterintuitive, um, but what you can do is think about these leaves as no different than cut flowers. So when I brought my kale home, this is in here, I don't have room for that in my fridge because I have so much other stuff. So I just put it in a mug with water, right? Yeah, and it'll yeah, stay there on. Yeah, so because cause here's the thing, you've got to eat this in seven days before you get more kale. So it's going to be there right on the counter and it'll remind you, eat this up, <laughs> right? You'll start to see the edges start to go yellow and it's like, oh, I got to eat it tonight, right? But it'll be right there and it's so big, why take up half your fridge with it, right? So what I do is I put it in the water, and this is not everyone has a little baby t-shirt sitting around, but I happen to. So I put water on it, just like the grocery stores, right? They keep those plants fresh by putting water on them. They're spraying that every time I show up, right? They spray it. <laughs> yeah, I think this, like this second, I, tr I trigger it or something, right? So put water on it at least once a day. 
And, the, and another way to keep it wet is have wet cloth around it. So I use this little baby t-shirt to keep it wet, right? But you can use a, a nail seat here. I have my chard, which I did put in the fridge, with a, a slightly damp dish towel, right? And so the same thing, what the plants need is a little bit of water and they need to be kept cold. So if it's really hot in your kitchen, which it might be, you might want to stick this in the fridge, right? Even if you need to crush it down. Even if you need to take the stems out and chop it up so it takes up less room. Once it's really hot, you may need to change that. But for now, other than today, it should be okay for a while. So this is my chard, which is a week old. And it's a delicate leaf, but I've managed to keep it pretty nice looking. It actually looked bad, and I made it better by adding water in the dish towel and putting it in the crisper drawer. And it's called a crisper drawer because it keeps things crisp by keeping that water around it, right? It's keeping that more humid. It's also keeping it from getting too cold, hopefully, if your fridge is functioning well. So that was in my crisper drawer. This was in a little glass of water, the basil and all the herbs make the kitchen smell nice, right? So there's no, re and I, there was twice as much last week. I've been eating it. What is it? Basil. Basil. You want to smell it? Basil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my, you want to pass it around? It smells so nice. This is what your kitchen's going to smell like. <laughs> Six weeks. Um, and then, let's see. So same thing. This is Napa cabbage. This has become one of my favorite vegetables because it is so versatile. You just stick it, after you've washed it, which we'll talk about in a second, you're just gonna stick it and go cut, 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 and make little strips of cabbage. And you can then keep those in the fridge, cut and washed and ready to use. You can eat them raw or cooked. Anytime you're eating anything, grab a little cabbage and throw it on top. You've got a naked plate in front of you that you're about to put chicken or rice or something else on that plate. First, put a handful of cabbage Dress the plate with some cabbage and then put your meal on top of it. You've just added one of your four servings of fruits and vegetables. So that's one of my favorite. It's really good in like a little bit of bread or something to make like a coleslaw. Any coleslaw recipe you've got, you can use any kind of cabbage for a coleslaw recipe. It doesn't have to be the kind that you're used to seeing in the store. Um, and then greens. You are going to get so many salad greens. Try to eat a salad every day because they're just gonna keep coming and you're gonna start throwing them out. You're gonna think, oh my God, I'm throwing so much food out. Now, fortunately, it's being paid for this year because that's gonna happen. It's part of the learning process, right? Of changing your habits every day. You're gonna throw some salad greens out. I do too, after doing this for five, six years and being a gardener and everything else, I still throw some out. <coughs> but um, I kept mine nice by putting um, paper towels in, and keeping it tight in a bag. This is now a week old, and this salad is still really good. There might be just a few little things I'm going to hand pick out of there. So, yeah, I put, yeah, it was like, it was slightly damp because I washed the greens first, and then I just threw them right on the towel. So, actually, that's a really good question. Let's talk about washing. So, you know, you can wash right before you cook something, but you can also wash the day you pick all of this up, right? So if it's like a Thursday evening and you have a little free time, that's the time to just go through before this goes in the fridge or in that little jar on your counter, take a moment and wash it. So what I do is I make, I if my kitchen sink is clean, I'll use that and put a little bit of vinegar in it. But because I cook meat at home, I don't have a clean kitchen sink. And I will admit that. Hi, Liz. So I use a mixing bowl, and I fill it with water and a little splash of white vinegar. I start with whatever is the least dirty looking. So that might be some of my root vegetables. This is a kohlrabi. We can talk about kohlrabi if this is the first time you're seeing one of those. <laughs> kohlrabi. I had never seen one until I had a farm share. And so what I'm gonna do is, this has a beautiful inside that I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna chop off the top and the bottom and all around the edges. And I'm gonna eat the part you can't see right now. And the part inside, nope, I'm not gonna eat the stems. I'm just gonna eat the part inside. And it's tender, but crisp. And so you can eat it 
kind of like carrot sticks, right? They did good. What's that? They did good. Yeah, instead of potato <laughs> chips, kohlrabi and carrot sticks. Um, it's like a raw potato, but it tastes like carrot chips. Yeah, that's a good description. I think yeah. it's botanically, like I think it's related to cabbage. Um, it has like this really nice fresh feet, like taste to it, but it's crisp and it has a nice bite to it. Yeah. So it's nice for just snacking on. I also, for my kids who don't eat it that way, I just cut it really small and throw it in a salad. And then it just gets lost. Good in soup. Yeah, good in soup. You can also cook it lightly. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, but look how clean it is. So that's gonna go and get washed first. And same with the carrots and parsnips that I picked up. There were a lot more carrots. They're now on your plates. So wash all this stuff first. And, and what I do is, as soon as it comes out of being washed, I'm busy chopping it and keeping it as carrot sticks in my fridge. I might not eat it all as carrot sticks, but I could chop that further, right? If I want to put it in a soup or a stir fry, I could just take a carrot stick and chop it up. I'm two thirds of the way there and it's ready to eat. So if I'm having a craving for potato chips at five o'clock when I just got home from work and I'm about to cook dinner for my family, this is what I put out, right? I put out the, the apple slices and the carrot sticks, maybe some dried apricots or, or nuts whatever I've got in the house, because then I've eaten my vegetable before I've even sat down for dinner, right? Sneak that extra serving in there. And then if you're, if you're really tired and you're just cooking something simple for dinner, you don't even have to add a vegetable, you've had it for your snack. So that's what I'm, I'm washing that. And then I'm gonna start washing my greens. And you are gonna notice some dirt coming off because this came from a farm, right? Yeah. It's good for you dirt. It's like really good dirt. It's all organic. There's nothing on there that's going to hurt you, but you may need to change your water once or twice if you're going through and washing like five or six things that evening. Um, and so I've washed it. It goes in the bag in the crisper drawer or it goes wrapped up in a towel in the crisper drawer or in my vase. Okay. One thing I came up with is I couldn't fit this in my crisper drawer because it was too long. So I chopped off the stems, but I kept them. These ones are looking a little sad. I gotta, cook, I gotta eat them tonight, these are from last week. So you think, okay, why would you keep the stems, right? Because I can make a dip out of this. I'm gonna put it in a blender with some white beans and maybe some beets and maybe some herbs, I could use mint, I could use some of the basil, I also got curtsy last week, a little bit, any sort of flavor in there, and this, this is food, right? And it's nutrition. All of that, all those minerals in the soil, they're in this stem as well as in these leaves. So I don't wanna throw this out. That's the same as me throwing out things out of my multivitamin jar, right? All this effort's gone into it. So I'm gonna try and get that in my body. I might not succeed, this may go in my compost. But I'm gonna keep it, and I'm gonna try. <laughs> Twilight, she goes, I've got two kids. I don't always get it all done. But I've got more stems from this week's share. So with all this together, I might as well make a dip. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's true with a lot of things you're gonna get. You're gonna get things that have greens on them, like turnip greens. Eat, you can eat those greens too. Did you have a question? We, we did a farm share years ago. And one of the things I discovered was that when you're washing all these salad greens, I was drying them with paper towels. I went out and got a salad spinner. It really helps. Yes, absolutely. That's a really good tip. If you can have a salad spinner. I have just a big colander. And so I just let it drip out. And I, and I just put my hand in and I scoop it around a few times. Mm -hmm. And I let time do a little bit of that. But absolutely, especially if you want to get it in the fridge. Yeah. That's a good idea found now that kale is being served by restaurants and grocery stores, they cut it very differently than I do at home. So they're serving it when you get a kale salad or something, and you're gonna have that big stem piece right in the middle. Yeah. I don't like that either. So um, the charred stems are much more tender. But when I'm cut, um, preparing kale, I'm gonna take that stem off. I'm gonna see if I can get this. Christy's not gonna ask, I'm gonna show you. So our first cooking class, what I'm going to talk about next is on greens for this very reason, right? Because there are so many different ways to prepare greens. 
So what I do with my tail is I hold it upside down and I pinch everything off of that stem to the point where it easily breaks. And I do throw this out. Now, yes, you could eat it. Like you could have, I could have chopped it across, right? And maybe if I'm at the point where I don't have a lot of food and I'm really hungry and I only have a couple pieces of kale, maybe I'll do that. It'll make my salad a little more substantial, right? But since I'm really fortunate that I have a huge amount of kale right now, I'm just gonna take this. Um, and you know, you can then chop this up, but what I do is I just rip it up. This way I'm just I'm just sitting there and I'm chatting with, with you know my family about my day. And the nice thing about ripping up the kale, I'm actually softening it as I go. So kale's pretty tough. I, I started by eating it cooked because cooking softens greens, right? Just like anything, right? It softens carrots. Some people might not like a raw carrot, but they love a cooked carrot. You so, have the key instead of cooking. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And most of the stuff can go in a crock pot for a couple hours, and you know, you, or you can go mash it up. Whatever you need to do to make it comfortable for you. But this is what I do with my kale, and then I throw it on my plate, and that's my beginning of a kale salad right there. No stems, and just the fact that I did this made it softer. And if I dress it with a vinaigrette, that vinegar is going to soften it even more. So maybe I'll put my dressing on while I'm still finishing setting the table and getting the rest of dinner made, and it'll sit and it'll soften it even more. That's a tasty kale salad. That's nothing like you're getting at the grocery store where they just go chop, chop, chop and throw it in the bowl. Yeah. Each week, your share will change a little bit depending on what the farmer has planted and how the weather has cooperated. You'll get used to changing your recipes based on what you have on hand. And part of that process will be learning to cook by talking with nutrition educators at CCE Tompkins. Sometimes you're gonna be surprised. <laughs> Sometimes all of a sudden you're gonna see something new because the season changes each week. It's not gonna be the same thing. The one constant will be greens, both raw greens and cooking greens, all six months. But all of a sudden onions and garlic are gonna appear and then all of a sudden you'll be like, oh my gosh, now I've got um, melons or tomatoes or cucumbers and you're gonna get so excited, you're gonna eat them, and then you're gonna follow that with the last week of tomatoes. And you have to, and you'll start start switching and cooking more root vegetables and other things that are available in the fall. So this diagram, it's not exact what you're gonna get, but it's just to sort of get that framework that the food will change throughout the season, as nature does. And so, in order to learn how to deal with what's coming your way we would like you to join us for our cooking classes. And we will focus on greens in the first class, like I mentioned, and figure out how you want to cook it and what kind of seasonings you like to use, right? Because if you can have one or two seasonings that you like, you can cook almost any of the vegetables with those seasonings. And we'll talk about having oil and dressing in your pantry for pickup so that that night you're ready to eat something. And then in August, we'll really start tackling like I don't like these flavors. How am I going to eat them? I don't like these turnips. I don't like these radishes. I want to find a way to make them tasty. And we'll try to troubleshoot a little bit. Um, we'll talk a little bit about blending flavors and trying to cook a little bit without a recipe, right? Just having, just starting with the vegetable and saying, how am I going to eat this? How am I going to get this nutrition in my body, right? Especially if I tried it and I didn't like it, or I tried a recipe and it failed and it ended up in the trash, all burnt or over flavored, right? So we'll sort of meet in the middle of the summer and say, okay, what is tricky and how can we make it taste better? And then in, in September, we're gonna um, learn to cook all of those amazing Mediterranean diet foods and pair them with legumes and think about, okay, if I have a can of white beans and I've got tomatoes or eggplant or uh, peppers, you know, can I cook it? I can cook it on the stove, I can cook it in my oven, I can cook it in my microwave, in my crock pot. There are so many different ways so that hopefully you'll be able to do that year round, right? If you get your hands on even a can of tomatoes or something like that, right? So just sort of thinking about like, this is a really good set of vegetables for all of us. We know it's really healthy. Let's become really confident cooking those Mediterranean Thank you for joining us for our class on washing, storing, and preparing fresh farm food. 
Enjoy bringing home your fresh local farm food every week. Thank you for supporting your local farmers and for making changes that improve your health and the health of our community.